Hey Shelby Bells, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. I have Zach here with me again. Hi. Um, so we are going to be talking today. We have the hot tea, uh, Deaf Noodles. Do you know who Deaf Noodles is? Uh, the guy you're in love with. <laughs> Shut up. Yes. No, I really don't know who he is. Okay, I'll like, explain it to okay. you. I'll explain who Deaf Noodles is and everything. Um, Zach isn't like super hip on the drama, the commentary. I'm hip. Team. Well, not really on that scene, but you do know a lot about the, how it used to be. Gap, oh, not Gabby. No, yeah. no. Well, I know about the like Tati. Yeah, he knows about all the. I was back like, in the day. I was watching Tati like every day before she was friends with Jeffrey. When she used to post five times a day before she was friends with Jeffrey Star at all. Yeah. Like I think before she moved to LA, I remember she definitely had one like big move. I think it was before she moved to LA. Really? I mean, for sure, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe she. I don't Maybe know. not before she moved to LA, but I don't watch. I was watching Tati like like seven years ago a lot she's just miss kitty zach's miss kitty just kind of like plopped down on me right here she's a little so head cute. pop up that's her that's her yeah and there's another um, one this, mr. his mr kitty is right here too i guess like okay so but i guys, feel like the entire saga of tati who was well i guess we'll get into it we'll but get into it but yeah. I really want to talk about deaf noodles in this video, and we'll see. I get. I want. To, we'll For some reason, I want to talk about Tati. Well, we'll talk about Tati too. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to talk about Tati. I, why not? I gave up Tati. I stopped watching her. Oh I, my god. Well, she after she so her becoming friends with Jeffrey Star and all that, and how it eventually she stopped becoming. Are, you, are they friends right now? No, no they're not friends. Okay, right good. Now. They shouldn't be. They never should have been, and it was fine. She was great before that. She became friends with them. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird move, but I'm gonna stick by her. And then her dropping them and being like, I never should have been friends with them. I was just like, well, duh. Like, basically, like, everyone was saying at the time, like, I can't believe, like, did you just fly out? Did you just do your makeup in a private jet for Jeffree Star? Like, what the f Yeah, that's kind like, of a weird move for her. That was the kind of the thing. That was, like, the big, her, like, step in that thing. I think that was her first collab with Jeffree Star. So doing I... Doing my makeup in, in, in the, the private, private jet. jet. And then yeah. they became friends. And, then she and the crazy, okay, what... If I can point out something about that video, which I know I don't know where this video is going, but okay. in that video she used <laughs> this freaking device from one of her WTF Wednesdays that was this lip plumping machine that she did it on WTF Wednesday. She said, ow, that kind of hurt. She got all these comments saying, I'm, you shouldn't do that, it's dangerous. All of everyone saying, oh, this is like, there's news articles about people hurting themselves with this machine. Next week's video, she addressed it, said, I, ne I never should have used that. Like, don't buy that, it's not safe. In the private plan, get ready with me, she used the freaking lip sucking device that she had told her fans like, oh, don't use this, it will hurt you in the long term, blah, blah, blah. That was the metaphor for like, her just disregarding what she knows is good for her mm -hmm. and it, it happened in that video and i remember thinking like i was like whoa like you're gonna use that machine like you think we're not gonna remember you saying like a month ago like not to use this and well, you're gonna it use it? The, the thing is was that video filmed before or after the jeffree star thing because you know sometimes well, they'll film stuff and not post it for a while I, if I'm not mistaken, it was a first impressions video on the device, and then the next video or the next WTF Wednesday's video, she addressed it immediately. So unless it was like within a week of her finding this machine, and then she somehow it was that week, and then it was posted months apart, like it would be a very strange lineup. I think she had to show off at Jeffree Star and just brought this random device because he thought it was so cute, like oh, ha, 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 like yeah. Angel. But she knew I did that So point. you kind of think, okay, so and Zach also, he has so many thoughts on like the beauty community, the drama community, and like where it was and how interesting it was and like the kind of like the downfall of it and everything. So I want to talk about that in this video. Um, but I think it kind of like, everything kind of plays into it. But I really want to talk about Deaf Noodles too. Yeah, because, so two is Deaf Noodles. So, okay, so Deaf Noodles, we're going to get into all this stuff. Because what he said was kind of like a little bit early. So there's a preview of what we're going to be talking about in a second. But... I want to talk about Deaf Noodles because Deaf Noodles, um, so who he is, he is a commentary channel uh -huh. who, like you. yes, but kind of like different because for me, I kind of just like shoot the shit and mm -hmm. like just kind of talk, right? And Deaf Noodles, he does more like news, but here's the thing with Deaf, okay, there's so much going on. He is, he presents himself as news, but in like a mm -hmm. satirical form. Okay. Right? I mean, that can always go like really. Dry humor. You know, whatever. And, and he's kind of funny and sometimes. Mm -hmm. So there's been so much drama going on with him because um, he, first of all, he got in cahoots with um, Ethan Klein. And you know Ethan Klein from H3? Yes. So people either love Ethan Klein or hate Ethan Klein, right? Um, and then he's like very much like kind of like 
fighting or feuding. They have actually a lawsuit uh, with each other. Keemstar. You know who Keemstar is? Mm, very clear. So Keemstar is like a very like outspoken commentary bro kind of guy. He's very like, in my opinion, if you want to hate me, it's fine. It, in my opinion, he's kind of sexist. He's kind of like, just kind of uh -huh. like dances the fence of like misogynistic and all of that. And, um, and so he, um, and Death Noodles, or his real name is Dennis, they have a lawsuit. Dennis is actually suing uh, Keemstar for defamation. Okay. And there's all this drama going on because um, basically Death Noodles is suing Keemstar because he, um, Keemstar said that Death Noodles was a P word, the James Charles, like the P word thing that you don't, you know what I'm talking about? Like the, the someone children. who preys on the children, other, yeah, on children, on the children. Oh, that p word. Someone uh -huh. who, in, who is interested in children. I love that James Charles is just the analog. I, and we, okay. He was a James Charles, you know. But, you know. but okay, we might even get into that too because he okay. has so many thoughts on James uh. Charles and stuff too. But anyway, and we don't have the same opinion. But anyway, um, so then, okay, so he that's what Death Noodles is suing Keemstar for, right? Okay. So then, a few weeks ago, I mean, you can't just say that. That's true, but listen to this. I'm, it's happy, true that, I'm happy that you say that. Uh, it's, it's just true you can't say that. I'm yeah, happy as well. Uh, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so then on uh, Twitter a few weeks ago, or a couple weeks ago, maybe even like last week, something like that, time flies, um, Deaf Noodles said that this one other creator named Papa Gut, who if you want to take out your phone and look who, uh, who Papa Gut is, you can. He's also a commentary guy. Gut? Papa Gut, yeah. He sounds like a, a 90s white rapper. He looks like kind of like Duck Dynasty vibes or whatever, and I'm, I don't think that face, it's the truth, he does. Papa, the, Papa Gut? I almost said pop, Papa, Papa Gut. Gut. Papa Duck. Papa Gut. Papa Gut. So look up like I have to see images. images. Wait, I'm supposed to look, oh. Yeah, so he's very I mean, dynasty, you know, he's very much that. Well he has a he's a commentary channel and like a channel where he kind of defends SA victims and kind of talks and spreads awareness about different kinds of SA and you know all of that, right? And Deaf Noodles said that he looked like a P word on Twitter. I mean But he is first of all, what were you gonna say? I'm not going to say that because I don't want to get sued, but... Do you think that... Okay, well, my thing is, like, you don't know what those people look like. They don't, they don't No, that's true. Look. Yeah, that's true. There is no look. I mean, Just that would be not, crazy like, to say. Just he's not, like, conventionally society, like, in society, no. like, a, a, what society attracts, a, cosmic is attractive to most people, doesn't mean that he is that, or that no. he looks like that. And the, the hypocritical thing that Deaf Noodles did is that he literally... Is suing Keemstar for saying that that Keemstar said that he was that. Oh, so it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Well, what he's saying? Oh, well, I was saying it satirically. Basically, he's yeah. saying that he can say that because he's a comedian, uh -huh. and everything on his channel is supposed to be a joke and all this stuff. But anyway, the thing—that's what people have used as an excuse to get away with saying horrible things forever have try or have tried to use as an excuse exactly it's up to the people holding them accountable to tell them or let them know whether or not it's going to be taken as a good excuse exactly but and that's the age old excuse oh i was him joking apart. well then yeah he then went he's on being this, a hypocrite exactly he went on this thing called twitter spaces where it's like where you're on twitter and then like you can kind of like voice chat to people and like have like up to eight speakers but like any oh an God. infinite number of people can be listening right and so he went on there. And oh, it's like a virtual of, conference. Or yes. It's like a virtual TED. I don't even know. Virtual like a virtual conference, conference call. call with observers. Yes. Interesting. And so he was kind of like asking, like taking feedback or just talking to people on there. And this conversation lasted for six hours. That sounds like a nightmare. I was there for the entire thing. I was about to say, was I no feel bad for anyone that was point. forced to like, that had to listen to that for like work or I have yeah, a video about it on my channel. basically you. I had to like, I have a video on it on it oh and about it on my God. channel and it's like i mean it's not like you have to just apart. sit there you could like do stuff like a sit time well i was like i mean i did like i i you started listening to that thing i started listening to that when i was leaving work because i saw what was happening i was like oh this oh is drama God. i went to chipotle got my chipotle came home was eating my chipotle while i was uh still listening yeah. to this and then i, I mean, really sat there like for another an hour. two hours oh after God. more than that I had to, uh, it was so much more than that anyway 
Jesus. different fans and people were talking to him the entire time about this whole situation and then eventually Papa Gut got on and they had this big argument, right? Well, he's the one who should be calling him out yeah. for this hypocrisy against him. Yeah, right. So but at the same time, fight. he, it all should just be seen as, I mean, no one is making, it's not like they're like calling the cops on these people and saying that you're a predator, this guy's oh, a predator. Oh my God, but here's the thing. Deaf Noodles put a picture of Papa Gut on Twitter and tagged the FBI Los Angeles. Okay, so that is totally actually like <laughs> yes. defamation. That could actually do real life repercussions for him. They could be very easily documented. Like that's how an actual like defamation case gets won. It's not like, oh, he said something about me. Look, here it is. It's like, no, like th he said the, the, the wrong thing or the right thing to the right or the wrong person, depending on you want to look at it. Like, if you're saying that and tagging the FBI, like, you've really just shot yourself in the foot as far as, like, I mean, that's, that's not, you can't do and that. And his defense That's no that... longer a joke, and there's no joking. Yeah. Like, that's like saying, oh, I called 911 as a joke, and they sent some officers out, and they were, like, speeding here because uh, they thought it was a real emergency, and so they, like, hit a little kid in the street, like, but it was a joke. Like, no, like, no, these are all, like, huge consequences. Huge yeah, because the thing is, the from. FBI has people, that's their job to sit there and look at all these Twitter, like, the things people post on yeah. Twitter, and follow up on that stuff. And honestly, like, and it's they, sh they kind of should and... be, if, if that's, like, if, if, that's the only way that a crime is going to get reported because someone wants to remain anonymous or whatever, or or someone has, you know, found that information and that's their way that they decide to report it, then it should be investigated by somebody. Exactly. If and someone's tagging someone and saying, like, at FBI, like, I, 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 I don't know how else you get a hold of the FBI. It's not like you can call them up and speak to an agent. Exactly. If, you, if you're uh, someone in our generation or generations younger than us, that's probably the yeah. best way you can, you can get something to reach to reach like that, if that goes viral because exactly. people want to boost it, exactly it's, because they want to help. It's like you can actually get someone a huge investigation and and yeah, like you said, taken it, away from other stuff. It's a wait, it's a waste of resources. I know they should be. And but he was trying to play it off and say that nobody's going to look at that. Nobody cares about that. Oh, you think that my little post is going to do anything? I mean, he was just making up excuses for it, and then like every he literally never backed down. And he literally just kept saying, it's because I'm a comedian. And he kept referencing this interview he did two years ago when his channel he, was significantly smaller because he blew up what in 2020. Say, he Basically, his, his premise for his channel was just like satirical comedy in a news form, kind of like John... John Stewart. Yeah, John yeah. Stewart, yeah. And it's like, or the Colbert Report or whatever. Yeah. And, but the thing is, it's like, the thing that made it so hypocritical also is that Deaf Noodles would also report on stuff that's like serious news, like the passing of a celebrity or different like allegations I mean, against James Charles reported on. You can, journalism is journalism. And, and I've even talked to you about journalistic ethics that I think you are, are, have a moral obligation to uphold. And whether or not you have a, a, a small channel and you're just talking about, you know, content creators, other content creators, or you're talking about just strangers on the street or anything, like you can't just, you can't just you have there's this journalistic ethics and exactly. and there are repercussions people that don't their legal repercussions is beyond the moral ones like mm -hmm. you can and that's what i guess he's facing but at the same time like so it's you, you don't get to say like oh comedy oh satire like but when you're when you're accusing somebody of such a serious thing so he's been yeah. under a lot of fire lately like people have not been letting down on him they're still talking about this they're still bringing it up everyone is like He's basically being canceled right now. People are not really... I'm not into cancel culture, but that's basically what's happening to him. So then it comes out. This is where it gets very interesting, okay? Then it comes out that he lied about his age online. So his age is... He said his age was like 27. Well, so how big is he to be able to just lie about his age? Because I feel like... He has like 500,000 uh, subscribers on yeah. YouTube. So and he was like kind of like this, a lot of people followed him on Twitter and stuff too. But how does he just lie about his age? So he told, okay, I don't apparently. Really that because I feel like if you, I mean, that's like a big, because like if you'd have to like, what, he like changes like Facebook and LinkedIn and all that, or that all was just like a lie or it all started at a certain time where he was like, oh, now I'm going to be. So his story was that he used to do acting before he was like big on YouTube and stuff. And his acting people and mentors, coaches, whatever, people people he was working with with the acting thing, 
advised him to lie about his age so he could get cast for different roles because his he was he looks a lot younger than he is. Oh, and so, he's like forty, right? So he's like thirty-seven or something like that. Okay. But he was saying he was like twenty-seven. That's so creepy, though. And so, okay, so you think it's creepy? I think that. The so okay so men and women lie about their age and I think there's hugely different incentives for each of them to do so. So what do you think is the difference? I mean, in my mind when people when I think of men lying about their age, it's so that. I mean, honestly, I don't think anyone should lie about their age. No, I just, if, I'm, if I'm actually gonna be honest and try to think about it like openly, no, I don't think men honest. or women should lie about should lie about their age. I don't but think it's is, okay yeah. for men if it's okay for women, but I think. For both of them, it's it's just straight deceitful, mm -hmm. and and it's it just comes across as so shady. And the the uh, you say you get an unfair advantage over mm -hmm. someone else who's not willing to lie, so you're being exactly. rewarded for your dishonesty. Exactly. Or say you um, get confidence from someone that in that age group that you're lying that you're posing to be in, mm -hmm. then you've just conned them, literally like confidence scammed them into giving you confidence based on just a lie. Like you shouldn't be able to to make somebody trust you more by lying to them. I mean, that's not a way that you, yeah, that's, you build relations it's, it's with people. Weird. And, and, and people have reasons for wanting to know like your, your true age. If someone, if you are at the point where you're telling someone your age or someone's asking your age, I mean, it's probably not just arbitrary. Like they probably want to know like, okay, what life experiences have you been through that I can I relate to you? Like, mm -mm. For sure. Just... So he's lying. He's saying he's 27. He's really 37. And my first, my first thought when I heard about the age, his real age, was I personally, because you know, like y'all know everything. I I think that dude is an asshole, but I think he's super cute. So I was actually kind of relieved that he wasn't younger than me. I know, honestly, because I I do. It's <laughs> I I wish he would own up to it because I think there's not enough 30 year olds represented in media at all. Yeah. Uh, like it, there's. There's just aren't pe there's a lot of young people and there's a lot of people that are like silver daddies in their forties, which isn't even a realistic silver daddy. In the commentary community, in the commentary community on YouTube, uh, most of us are in our thirties. Um, and most of us are in our thirties um, that I know of or beyond, honestly. So the fact that he was lying. And I say that's why I love Julia Fox because she's like in her. I think she's thirty one or thirty two. Yeah. She has like a kid, and she's just like. She she's the celebrity Fox. for us. She's like the one for us. I think Julia Fox is weird. And I think she's just so like earnestly just like being like what she thinks she's supposed to do to be famous and like she's like I did all the right steps and look at me and I'm on a billboard I, now. I just I think it's so Kanye fun. West, like, I know that she did that good. good. She did good. <laughs> Honestly, she was in Uncut Jams. Uncut Jams. That was huge, I'm sure. And I never she seen that. She did her she did her makeup herself. Oh, yeah. So like I just think she's she's the like 31-year-old just millennial celebrity for us. You, he loves Ju what's her name? Julia Fox. Julia Fox, yeah. He loves Julia oh, Fox. I think she does her fans are like the Fox. Are you the a fox? Fox sets or something. Fox or the Ed? Fox Tales or Fox Tales. Uh, I am one of them. Fox Hounds. That's kind of cute. Fox Hounds. You start the I'm trend. Gonna, yeah. she, I'm sure it's already big. But I follow her on Instagram and yeah, she posts great stuff. She went shopping in a bra and underwear with like a trench coat on. Yes. That's so iconic. I would If never. I got, I know, but it's like if you got to the level of fame where that was acceptable, wouldn't that be like the first thing you did? No. The first thing I did. That's, that would be the first thing. If, if I, no, there is a level of fame <laughs> where people are just like, oh, you rich, young, pretty girl, you just go do that. You, you're okay. Like if, 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 you know, like my mom did that, she'd be arrested. That's true for indecent exposure. Yeah. Even if they were in the exact same clothes. But I mean, she, she just did it so like, she's like, she probably woke up that day and she's like, I'm going to do something like crazy. So is Julie Fox like an influencer or is she like No, she's an actress. She was in Uncut Jams. She was in Uncut Jams. <laughs> uh, she was Joss Hotte's niece in Uncut Jams. Yeah, no, she's just an actress. <laughs> she's not like in anything big. I'm sure she will be soon. Uh, she might have been, no, I don't know. I feel like everyone was probably in like a Marvel movie or something. I've never seen that. I'm not a big Marvel person. Everyone, I'm a big anti-Marvel person. Like, yeah, me too. I'm like not well, into that's all that That's not the stuff. popular opinion. I know, yeah. Sorry, I'm not really. into comic book movies. Well, I'm, I saw Spider-Man with um, 
uh, Tobey Maguire. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, the, one, the old one back in the day when yeah. we were really young. And there were 17 other Spider-Mans. They've made since then. Oh, I thought that was a real number. Is it? No. It's, okay. it's I mean, possibly. It's there's been, been like so... Because there was like two this year or last year. It's an egregious There was one where he was wearing like a Letterman jacket over right? a spider suit. Egregious. Egregious, right? Yeah, he did it. She's cool. a scholar. I'm a scholar. She's real smart. But okay, so... So you think that live light lying about your age is weird. People are I saying... I think it's totally weird. And I think that even if... I mean, even if... Like, what are people, what are people saying? Because I'll, I'll, I'll counter any argument. <laughs> so, some, so some people are saying that he it's creepy that he's lying about his age because he's trying to, like, lure young women in. I mean, and that's not a given that that's I, the reason why. But at the same time... If you're a full grown adult. I know. I know. Well, no, I know. That, that's true. I mean, you are more likely to, to like swing if you're like someone underage if you're 27 and if you're 37 which at the same time you're both of those men are predatorial so it's not like oh he was 37 and he had sex with the or had it don't say sex i think you can say but yeah you can just they say just do did it, it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they did just it. did it okay i don't know what i didn't <laughs> say what that's horrible you can say it maybe once they did it good. and he did it with someone who was underage then <laughs> Then it's not gonna be like, oh, he was twenty seven. It's okay. Like, oh, yeah. and that guy was thirty seven. Lock him up. Like, no, they're make both okay. Right. But less of a thing. but trying to get with twenty seven year old chicks when you're thirty seven, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, lying to women at any time to try to to try to entice them to date you or to be with you or or to hang around you is not okay. Lying but to anyone trying to entice them. I don't know if he was doing. I don't know if he's lying about his age for that. I feel like he was lying about his age. Because uh, to get the fill the the acting. So that could be possible it. at the same time if if <laughs> unless people have come forward and said like oh I knew he was thirty seven like he have, all his friends know this like oh it's common yeah. knowledge or like oh yeah he told us he told me on our first date or whatever if he's like oh well it says on my thing so I have to keep this going like even with this random person like stranger I met yeah. like why would you well, you think you're gonna I blow know. it you're blow your cover like if I'm pretty sure in Hollywood if or in whatever if he wants to call Hollywood or YouTube world. If, if you decided you want to be represented as a certain age, they're not going to, like, expose you. And, I mean, I guess they did. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. They're, they're... <laughs> well, at the same time, <laughs> I think there's a way to go about it. But I don't he's know. Not, Just, he's first of all, don't, don't lie about your age. I know. He's not the only YouTuber that does that. I know. Okay. But at the same time, like... <laughs> So, I mean, if there's a way to do it, like, in a tongue-in-cheek way. Yeah. And there's a way to do it in, like, a serious way. And there's a way to and do it in a predatorial way. I think that he was doing it... Well, we don't know if he was doing it. I don't... It wasn't predatorial. It wasn't, we don't know if he was doing it to lure under... Or to lure 27-year-old women. Or, and, or 20... I don't even know. And then also, people were saying that he's doing it... And it's creepy because he's really... And this is... I have, I have an argument against this one. So I'm going to say what it is and then give you my argument. So... People are saying it's creepy because he's 37, talking, pretending he's 27, talking about people that are 19, 18 on YouTube. And to that, I have to argue against that because what I don't think that has anything to do with the other thing. And even if he is, if he was like out and open as being a 37 year old man and he was talking about 19 year olds, like I don't. Like, I mean, well, what about that guy that you follow the, that was in the car? Peter Mon. That's what I'm Peter Mon. Peter Mon's in his fi he's 50. Yeah, he's doing it. And if he's you have doing good it. stuff to say. Then there's nothing wrong with doing it. And I know, and like you said, you a, can provide, a lot of these YouTube contests are in their 30s. Yeah, you can provide insight and stuff on situations. I think I personally better. believe that old people know more than young yes. people. I would rather listen to what a 37 year old has to say about a situation than a 27 year old. No offense to 27 year olds. It just. They have 10 more years mm -hmm. of experience and knowledge. And 10 more adult years exactly. is not like, like oh, from 0 to 8 or 0 to to 18. Yeah, I have 18 years of life experience. No, you have 0 at that point. No. You started at 18 and 0 years of life experience. When you're 27 or 28, you have 10 years. When you're 38, I mean, you have 20 years. But it's not like and having twice the amount of double the life experience. So you're going to be doubly as smart. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I personally am under the belief that these drama channels that are a little bit older in the 30s beyond whatever we provide a better insight on situations because we have more exactly we have more life experience yeah. and all of that and we provide and just to a be better, outside of the approach. loop a little bit enough to and be able to like take a good look at the whole thing from far away and not be like oh i'm still feeling these same emotions myself like when you you don't really fully understood i mean it takes a while to fully understand 
why you make these decisions and, and to learn from them and, and to grow. So if you're not learning until in your 30s, like why you act the way you did in your 20s mm -hmm. for like through like therapy or just thinking alone in yeah. the corner about life and what went wrong <laughs> yeah. or whatever. How you then, ended up where you are. Yeah, then I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to comment on what people in that age group who are still yeah. going through those age. Or when you see the 19 year old doing the stupid stuff and you're like, oh, that I remember when I did that kind of yeah. stuff when I was that age and you learn from it and we provide a better insight. So to, to just, I mean, I don't know. I think it's stupid. I will say that's that, not that, a good, I mean, that's just not a good reason to say. I mean, I, I don't think even, which that kind of leans into the excuse that Oh well, people are ages and don't want to like watch old people. Like you could just say like, it, so if that's what you're saying. Like, I mean, I guess there is an There's argument to be the, the made for that. Yeah, there is an argument to be made for that. But at the same time, that's not universally true. There's no graph that says viewers at 18 up here get this many views, and the older you get, the less views you get. There's going to be, it's going to be a huge variable for each yeah. age group and for, and for regions and for the topics that you're discussing. Mm -hmm. People maybe that um, are doing like skateboard videos and, and like super like indie music review videos. Yeah, maybe I do want to listen to a younger person, but people yeah. who are talking about, you know, actual like life advice and actually like... Or I mean, it's just, it's just there's a lot of factors. You yeah. can't say young people get more views and and say that's it. Oh, he chose to be 27 because young people get more views. That's not how it works. I will there's say, a factor, but it's not it's not cut and dry. It's not a good enough excuse to lie sure. to people. Exactly. I will say though that Deaf Noodles has since said that he is happy that his real age came out. It, this was this started back when he was doing more acting roles than YouTube stuff. And that it was for acting and that he's happy that his real age is out there because he want he's been feeling uncomfortable about the fact that his age is not right on online anyway like if you go to famous burgers whatever it's like the wrong age but he's like happy now that people like know the his actual age and he's not like hiding from it or running from it he's embracing it he's posting a lot of shirtless pictures to show us oh uh, yeah great you've been like re retweeting i love it so much and so it's so it's been you know he's embracing it and stuff like that so i i think that's a good thing but you know he okay now i want to circle back into the drama stuff and i'm not really okay. quite sure of a good segue to get back into that but i want to talk about oh okay this is just before we get really into that maybe this will lead us into that but did you hear that this is actually very sad serious news you guys so um sad moments ser uh, serious moment um jacqueline hill's ex-husband john hill died today or yesterday no huh well, yeah. what happened i um, guess they don't know i don't i don't really know well, the reason but i know that last time i had heard he was that, I guess. last time i had heard um he was homeless he was living on the streets what he had he a drug problem oh my god but yeah. don't so how long ago or how long have they been apart or separated years or? like a few like years okay yeah and so they she he didn't have any money to he, like he didn't have a lot of i mean that's a, that's the question right like i don't know if that necessarily is like her place i guess it could mm. have been seen as a kind thing to do but he also was an addict so, so they, they didn't have any kids together or anything no no you're not it's not her place to and she, she was, shouldn't feel obligated to do no that. i mean she can make an effort but at the same time if it ends up hurting her but if he was an mm. addict and maybe she did used to give him money and then he used it for other stuff i'm speculating no i know it's, you like, definitely cannot blame her for that yeah but it's so sad so uh jack to jacqueline hill our condolences go out to yeah, her I'm and john sad. hill and I'm his sorry. whole family and stuff and that's really sad but anyway so that that happened today but i want to get back into what you were saying about the uh about the drama community and like the youtube the beauty community and everything and everything you were saying at the beginning of this video right? right so like talk to me more about that can you are you able to just like pick back up on that yeah, I mean, I just think that it was it, it, the first the drama of the YouTube community and the I specifically I'm kind of thinking more of the beauty community because that's what I was interested in at the time. The drama was like a supplementary thing that just would pop up every now and then. Um, people, you would you would hear about like incidents happening or someone would reference something in a video. You'd read about it a lot of times in a comment. Um, and you'd be like, oh, I want to know what that person's talking about. So look at them, someone would have happened to make a video about it, either a dedicated drama channel, which would be a very small channel, like I remember mm -hmm. a bunch of them, of course. I mean, just a bunch of channels. But the, it became, 
the drama began to a point where that was when it became to a point where that was the whole industry was the the drama itself mm -hmm. people started seeing through it and it stopped being fascinating it stopped being it stopped drawing us in because it just drama for the sake of drama itself isn't as entertaining as See? naturally foreign drama so i think even just like the naming of all the scandals and the drama get and drama get and one yeah. and two and so that lost you and all that stuff. I think yeah, I think it lost me and I think, like I said, like I think specifically in the beauty community, good like watching Tati kind of engage with that side of it and then be kind of forced to disengage after a while was just really like not pretty journey to watch it was it's gross kind of hard to watch that yeah, yeah the whole thing was gross like especially it just because like i mean tati is not innocent by any means i think that her the james charles video the original exposing james charles video was incredibly homophobic and damaging to gay people and i always will think that yeah. no matter what james charles did and no matter what he is i think the way she approached it was incredibly just in bad taste i don't think she's sufficiently apologized for that at all but at the same time, like, all of this toxicity just, it became so obvious. It became so obvious that people were profiting off of it mm -hmm. and enjoying it. And it's supposed to be, like, bad stuff that's happening to people. But when you can see all the other people enjoying it, it becomes gross. Well, it started off it, as, like, oh, there's, like, this eyeshadow palette is patchy. Or, like, this makeup brand, this mega makeup brand or whatever they're having an issue with their launch. Like that was the way that it started yeah. out as. And then it got into like this this crazy allegations of people. And well, I think, so I, really that's a good point back. too. It never really went back to, oh my God, this eyeshadow palette is, is patchy. patchy. It, it, it's or now, like, like some of the original drama was also like digging up people's pasts, mm -hmm. a lot of that, yeah. which like still will kind of happen. But I think people are more forgiving of the past now because they're like, okay. I think we've processed how we deal with that. We kind yeah. of take every example or every instance, kind of judge it by itself. Like, okay, like, did were these this was this ever this person's true feelings or was it something they said in joke? Maybe this was a bad joke they said. Maybe they're in the heat of the moment. Let's think about the like, the framing, what time yeah. it was. Was this at a time when people were tweeting? gross shitty things all the fucking mm -hmm. time and getting thousands of tweets because it was just a more permissive of that time since then has behavior changed yeah have people changed has this person's it? yeah have they, have they have they ever apologized have they have, did they wait to get called out to apologize or is that something that they've clearly shown a change in behavior yeah. like there's i think it's definitely a case by case situation i think we're beyond just the automatic cancellation yeah for sure and then i think that now th when it got really dark when that whole they call it drama get too, right with the tati james and jeffrey star and all that stuff and it got to a really dark place during that time well, there was some about serious issues the, but it never some was the, really turned around back from that it's no. still now well, it, day, it's not it never why topics. would it ever because you're not gonna if you say something less dramatic than the last video you're not gonna see them any views so. it's about the other people like now it's about you know trisha pays husband moses and he, he is like you know stealthing women and like all these like you, do you know what that is yeah ew and like and and just like you know how he's been a, a crappy guy and then in like really horrible ways i can't really say on the internet and then, like, you know, just the, the whole David Dobrik and Jeff Wittick thing where, like, no, David it's Dobrik so intentionally, much you know, flew him off the excavator. And, like, it just, the drama has just been so dark. Flew and, him like, off the excavator? Do you know what? You don't know about that? No. So David Dobrik, you know who that is, right? Yeah. There's this guy named Jeff Wittick who was also part of the part of the vlog, vlog squad at one point. What is flew him off the excavator? So they were doing a stunt, because that's what David Dobrik does, uh -huh. like, stunts and, like, pranks and stuff, where you were they were swinging from an excavator. Uh -huh. And um, when... Jeff Wittick got on it, David Dobrik, it's all alleged because there's like lawsuits and stuff right now, but- So it never was like published as a video? No, there's a video out there, but I have to say that because I don't want to be involved in their fucking lawsuit, okay? Um, but they, um, David Dobrik started swinging the excavator super like fast around. Uh -huh. And so the, the wire, what happened was Jeff Wittick, he was on the, holding onto the thing, swinging from it, and he like, David Dobrik stopped the excavator super quick, and Jeff, because the momentum and everything, he slammed into the side of the thing and fell into the thing. And like went blind basically in one eye. 
Oh my god. Like super messed up. Yeah, that's super dangerous. <clears throat> and so like the, there's like the, so that's like super serious and crazy, right? Well, I there's there's so much going on with that, but they're like so that's like another super serious thing that people yeah, that's are talking about. Dark, but and yeah. it hasn't gotten is into James a, Charles and the whole thing that the he's James Charles thing is dark too, and I think a lot of it has become the political climate. The right is changing too. A lot of the general recourse in general is becoming dark. People are saying that drag queens are out there to try to convert children into like homeless. Can't say that word. Yeah, and even like James Charles and like everything that he was doing, right? It's like, like that is such a serious topic, being like a p word and everything. We 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 had to go back and stop and restart because Zach said the p word, the full name of the p word. I said, wait, you can't say that. Say and so p now word. we're like coming back into the video. So only part we're editing is because he said that. Yeah, you can't say but, that. And he has his own like viewpoints and stuff on the whole James Charles yeah. thing and everything. Well, okay, so I just think that. Um, for a, a lot of it started with Tati when she like said that he was like trying to. What, what was like the famous line she said? Oh, um, sucking dick and cock. No, no? <laughs> why? <laughs> no. So they're like, so you tried to turn a waiter gay oh, or something. Okay. <laughs> she also said that. She did not say that. No, she did. Okay. Well, anyway, a lot of what I think Tati said. <laughs> <laughs> just made it seem like James Charles and other gay men are predatorial or are in the way that they just uh, I don't know I just the James Charles thing I wish that she had never opened that box on that one yeah I I mean there's so many different ways you can look at that I think that I think that James Charles, the things that have happened to him... I mean, since then, he's done a bunch of stuff that's just not cool, but... It kind of, honestly, like, I won't say proved Tati right, because the way she said it was not no. good for, for the gay community and everything. But at the same time, like, she wasn't wrong either. Yeah. I mean... You know? In that case, she was... The waiter... The waiter, she was wrong. But maybe, yeah. she, maybe she knew other stuff behind the scenes, and that also was the catalyst to her making the video you know the thing is what what people see online i always say this what people see online is one percent of what actually goes on behind the scenes if people knew what goes on really behind the scenes and stuff with social media and i can say that having a a tiny little inside the stuff it's crazy you you, what people see here is the smallest minute fraction of how people actually are and how mo- a lot of people like the big the big names how people actually are and what really goes down it really just goes on it's like that yeah but i don't know i think that the death noodles thing lying about his age is whack but uh, i think it's, he's I think it's definitely right. if he wants to claim like oh i was like caught in a lie like I mean, any, anyone out there, if you're caught in a lie, if you're caught in a lie with me, just, like, fess up now. And he did. And he did. He got caught, right? He got caught, yeah. No, fess up before you get caught. Exactly, yeah. That's the key. Yeah, that's the if key. If you know you're in a lie and you're saying, oh, what am I going to do? Just right now, pick up mm-hmm. the phone, text your boyfriend or your girlfriend and say, like, I messed up. Or text your mom and say, like, like... <sighs> It was me, you know, or He's whatever born. it is. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. No, I, I think that him lying to begin with is kind of whack. I think it's, I think the people saying that The him, longer you lie, the worse it's going to be. Yeah, but I will say though that But the, it the seems like it really jokes, hasn't been that bad. The age jokes and stuff like that are just like uncalled for. I, you, you guys heard what I said about my my view on older people doing old people. drama commentary stuff like that because i feel like we do provide a better insight not saying that the younger ones don't provide any insight at all because they have their own oh, yeah it's great to, it's honestly best to get a perspective from both and, and it's great you don't want to only get a perspective from 27 year olds you don't want to only get a perspective from you want to get a perspective from everybody so you can compare them and weigh them to your own and, and that's the beauty of having that's why they have YouTube, YouTube at all and yeah. not just a, a TV where we turn on the one channel and listen yeah. to what the government or whatever, whoever controls us wants to tell us. But it's the, We it's get to choose who ones, we get to listen like, to and we get to compare all this different information. Yeah, and it's like the younger ones, like, okay, boomer, like, you know, and, all, and it's just like, that. yeah, yeah. That's know. silly because, I mean... First of all, he's not a boomer. And you're, you are going to be old one day if you're... You mean you better freaking hope, yeah, punk. That you, that you get to be my age. Okay? I know. Being <laughs> old, every day older you get, you've just 
you've lowered, it. I mean, you've made it and you've Lower beaten it. another probability that you weren't going to yeah. make it to that age. And honestly, and for the you young get, people, like when you get to your 30s and beyond, like life gets so much better. Like you just stop caring as much about what other people think. Yeah. Like things get a lot better for no, you. No, you so. learn, uh, you become, you will you will laugh at your old self. And you get your perspective, you can provide a better insight and perspective onto things yeah. you once couldn't. But I think that that's going to be it for today's video, you guys. We talked about so many topics. This video is like 40 minutes long, so... We um, talked about a lot more than so we were supposed to. I know we did, but that's good. about death noodles, we talked about like James, Charles, and Tati, which I still don't even really say what I need to say. Well, say what you need to say. No, I just... Well, the James Charles is just... he. I'm mad at James Charles more than anything. Okay, let's tell us why. For, okay, I'm mad. Okay, one, I'm not like... I think his predatorial behavior is disgusting. But two, like... I think that he and any gay man has a in this public spotlight has some obligation to other gay people to fight to have a good to put out a good image of who, so who you are and what we are because we're fighting against a lot of negativity against us like I said there's people who are saying that they're trying to pass laws about restricting like drag queens from children as if there's ever been a case of like a drag queen hurting a child in that way like there's real dangers in our society and when we pinpoint these like boogeymen then we're we're letting like the real like actual criminals get by and exactly i mean i don't think we should be searching more for like criminals out there or anything but i mean i don't know i just think that james Charles screwed up he he absolutely did. He absolutely did because he, his responsibility. And I to think the what I want to know is to be like to be because people see him. There are some people who have who from parts of the world or parts of the country and stuff. They don't have a single. They don't have gay people like that, right? Because yeah. they're very conservative, or whatever. They see James Charles online. They think that every gay person is going to be like that. Yeah, and, and they say, "See, I told you, Billy. Told you about that, or that's that." See, they're trying to trap you. They're right. We need to pass these laws or whatever. And also, and I think James Charles needs to uh, needs to take out some time off the internet. I don't understand. Oh, he never has. The, it's it's really not okay to not like self-censor when you need to and not to like take yourself out of the public spotlight when you need to and when people mm -hmm. are telling you to and staying mm -hmm. on there just because you're going to have a small fraction of people supporting you or a small i mean most of the people that follow james charles don't actually like actually follow him and or see his stuff pop up on their feed so they're not and they're not actively like caring about him but the the only if ever not everyone's gonna unfollow him every bad thing he does He's going to be remaining. Yeah. He's going to have these subscribers. If you have any subscribers, you're going to be able to get brand deals. Mm -hmm. Other brands are going to say that you just got a brand deal. They're going to give you a brand deal. Like this Take whole thing, you're the deal. only one to stop this, to put a stop to the thing. And it, it's because you are caught in this, like, probably overspending cycle, too. Yeah. Where he has mortgages and, and payments on jewelry and all sorts of crazy things that, I mean, he has to fund and he has to stay in the public spotlight. Even when it's that, it's yeah. not appropriate to put yourself out there when you are going through stuff like that, mm -hmm. and when I mean, you're basically presenting a public yes. image. The cat is climbing on the tripod. <laughs> miss. Oh, he just miss. Come here, miss. Miss. Come, come miss. here, mom. Good girl. She come. <laughs> she can. But yeah, no, he has a responsibility and to, to... I wish he could be more like Lil Nas X. Oh. Who's great. I mean, but there's Big even fan. better. I mean, there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of great queer creators out there that are changing people's negative perceptions. But of, James Charles kind of counter... -acting. James Charles is reinforcing his... And he's reinforcing negative ideas about consumerism and about... Mm -hmm capitalism that I don't even like to begin with. I don't think anyone should be spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on luxury goods yeah. that they're not actively using. Yeah, and sure. especially, when, I mean, and then him being disrespectful to material goods, like creasing these collector shoes and stuff. I don't know why I've dived that like him, but I think I've seen like reaction videos, him like of his closet tour. And he's like saying like, oh, they say not to crease these Jordans. And he's like, mm -mm -mm. it's like, well, now you're just like now you're just mocking hurting money. money. Yeah, you're yeah. mocking money, basically. Yeah, or mocking the people that would die yeah. to have these. Yeah, like, well, you're going like, oh, $5,000 depreciation, $5,000 depreciation, $5,000. Yeah. 
act and you're just doing that in front of people's faces whose five thousand dollars would pay their rent for six months i saw this one picture of him and i, I mean the outfit was cute whatever but it was just like mm. like being so extreme because he had two little balenciaga bags those little like new yeah. stuff and he had two of he them has on his horrible wrist. Like, taste he has horrible <laughs> fashion tastes too he, he needs a good <laughs> no he does it's not like anyone i mean i hope no one actually thinks he has good style or fashion <laughs> he doesn't i mean he dresses some of his stuff is like cute like can't be fun yeah but for the most part he dresses in like like athleisure like sweat clothes during the yeah. day and stuff and then like random like Assless skank traps. dresses yeah. <laughs> well then he has like all these costumes that's honestly the best part of his fashion is his stupid costumes because then you're wearing a costume it's a costume yeah you're control it's a costume it's not supposed to be serious it's his serious attempts at fashion, which are really upsetting and disturbing. You know who I think has really good fashion? Oh. You, right Oh, now. you mean my <laughs> It's Shelby merch? Yeah, why don't you lead in so they can see where you're oh. So he has a stain on the shirt, which was, I'm so mad that he got a stain There's on the shirt. There's a stain under it. It's also super wrinkly. But you guys, this is the merch. So this you guys, is the merch. This is the front. This is the front. The black, the, the black. The back is just plain white. So I'm not going to show you. This is the Shelby t-shirt crew neck. How, give us a review. So I think the shirt is super good. It's white shirt quality, yeah. quality. Shirt it's shirt. I'd say it's shirt quality. Shirt quality. Shirt quality cotton, which is what you're you want in a nice t-shirt. And then it's got this uh, neck that's built in. It's sewn already in there, so you don't wow, have. Shut the fuck up. It now, should. Now he's being stupid. No, I mean it is has. He not to have and, no, it's so it's not just raw fabric or wow. anything like that. And also okay. sleeves hemmed. Hemmed Shut and up. the bottom is hemmed. So you don't have to worry about fraying. In all seriousness to you guys, I launched my merch. Zach's wearing it. If you want to check it out, Small you can know, stain. I'll link it in the, the stain does not come with the shirt. Okay. And no this worries. is not see this isn't that's a it's a paw print. Those are not actual paw prints. Those are part of the, the design. The design. So you might have thought, oh, a tiny cat also put another stain there. <laughs> But that's not what that is. But I'm gonna link my merch in the comment, in the in the pinned comment, and also I also have a sticker. Box. So yeah, he has mm -hmm. a sticker too. So um, so you guys, if you want to check out my merch, you can. It's on Redbubble. Um, I'm doing it through them, and they're really good. I love them so much. They're very easy to work with. Miss Kitty also has her merch line, so you can see all of that in the link I provide them collab. below. Collab. First collab is Shelby v Miss Kitty. The ex Miss Kitty. Shelby ex Miss Kitty. Kitty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex whatever. <laughs> First, it's a battle versus it's a Miss battle. Kitty. Who sells the most? Miss Kitty would Ooh. win. Um. Anyway, you guys, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. This was. We talked about so much in this video. It's going to be like an hour long. I love that for us. Okay. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified of all my future videos when they do post. Remember, all Shelby Bells, ring the bell. Ding dong. Um, leave us all the comments. Do I have bells? Oh. About. Oh, I have a lot of bells I in my home. We're in my we're in my apartment. We never said that. I mean, we're in my apartment, so we have all the bells we need. I have a bell too. I, I, I gave it to you. To I always forget to ring my bell. I know I gave anyway. you a bell. No, it's okay. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on all the different topics we talked about in the comment section uh, down below. Ring the bell. Wanna, ring the bell. Ring the bell. I won't do things. it again because um, it's very loud. Ring the bell. Buy the merch. Like the video. Comment. Uh -huh. Do all the things, guys. Get the emojis. Get the emojis. If you join the bell army, you can get the emojis. That's actually the best part of Bell yeah. Army because you can go around and see the other Bell yeah. Army members and, then you can see, like, and the feel emoji. exclusive and you can say, hey girl. And then when someone hey, makes an Daniela. emoji, you're like, I know how you, oh, hey Dale, yeah. I know how you got your, uh, your emojis, girl. You're, it's Shelby emojis, yeah. your member too. Members. But yeah, guys, um, if you like Zach, I'll leave his Instagram in the, in the description box so you can follow him on Instagram if you want to. And yeah, guys, if you, um, what's the rest of my outro? I don't remember. Oh, if you enjoyed today's video, YouTube should be suggesting a couple more down here for you to choose from. So I'd love it if you did that. And aside from that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.